A 26-point first half and 37-piece total for 2019's third overall pick, R.J. Barrett, consisted of the phenom out of Duke, helping hold Curry to just two points on 0-for-7 shooting in the first half, nine points for the game as a whole, and most impressively, zero threes for just the second time in five years. Another former Nick and Emmanuel quickly is showcasing what he can do with an offense at his fingertips. Darko Ryakovic continues to make strides in the right direction as a rookie man in charge, while after one major trade, GM Masai Ujiri has to make a decision about Pascal Siakam. Stay tuned. Right click though, just 11% of you are subscribed, so please subscribe if you haven't already. In the bucket getting era, it bodes well if you're a Raps fan that since the blockbuster with the Knicks, Toronto's posted the NBA's third best offensive rating, just a few spots behind the reigning champion Nikola Jokic led Denver Nuggets. Before the trade, the Raptors ranked down at number 17 in that area. The improved offense has come about without the new additions knowing the ins and outs of the playbook given it's only been four games. So with more time, Ryakovic has the right pieces to implement a system that vamps Toronto's scoring flow to an elite level. Barnes, Barrett, and Quickly, aka BBQ, filling out positions 1 through 3 while all being under the age of 24, entails Toronto's talented youngins will have a chance to develop their games next to one another as the years progress, with how Scott, Rowan, and Emmanuel each have the capacity to knock down deep range shots and attack the paint offensively and defend with precision on the other side, this has suddenly blessed the 2019 champions with a formidable core in 2024. Both Barrett and Quickly were in the shadow of Randall and Brunson in New York. Now, next to the more off-ball willing and capable duo of Siakam and Barnes, the newest Toronto point guard and shooting guard have the chance to run their own show for the six. The Raps dropped 70 six first half points and took a 27 point advantage into halftime against Golden State, a lot of that due to not merely their new firepower, but also their game plan. In a rematch of the 2019 NBA Finals, with Siakam and Boucher being the lone Raptors left over from it, Darko don't call him Serbian Nick Nurse Ryakovic. Boys, I feel like I'm in a time lapse right now. First of all, this guy's not Nick Nurse, I haven't been here in a while. <laughs> Forced nine-time champion Steve Kerr to call two early first-quarter timeouts as the Raptors were a team possessed out of the locker room defensively in the opening frame. While their offense revolved around exposing mismatches in the post, Toronto can afford to play like that due to their size. Some coaches are hesitant to post up on Stephen Curry, not the Serbian mastermind veteran assistant and current rookie man in charge Darko Ryakovic. Between Scotty, Pascal, Barrett, Quickly, and Pirtle, Toronto's loaded firepower was attacking the paint at will, flexing their size advantage over Golden State. Pascal and RJ were also lighting it up from distance, and speaking of perimeter shooting, Gary Trent Jr. and Chris Boucher also helped open up the lead in the first half down in the bay. The Raptors have what it takes to elevate into a playoff team with the addition of two desperately needed shot creators. It's quite frankly much easier to watch this team than it was before the trade as the driving and shooting fundamentals from both RJ Barrett and Emmanuel Quickly are with all due respect to all NBA defender OG Ananobi on another level than any of the players Toronto traded to New York. If the highlights won't prove that to you, numbers never lie. And specifically in terms of the Kentucky product in 2020 first round pick Emmanuel Quickly, the stats precisely confirm his picture perfect fit in the six. The massive 32 game sample size before the trade still puts Toronto as the 30th ranked team in points per game generated from a pick and roll ball handler through 36 outings. NBA.com doesn't provide advanced filters for play type stats like they do for general stats, so we can't see how Toronto's pick and roll creator scoring's been specifically since the trade. However, However, you can't expect the Raptors pick and roll scoring to get a lot better, given Emmanuel quickly according to the NBA University Twitter account is the most efficient pick and roll ball handler including passes, just ahead of the likes of Giannis, Halley, Kawhi, Blue Arrow, D. White, and SGA. In other words, the formerly known as GM wizard Masai Ujiri made up for Toronto's exact needs by dealing OG, Flynn, and Achua for RJ and IQ. Stopping the Warriors on four straight attempts in the mid-third quarter after Golden State had grabbed O-Board one after the next, 
The Raptors also showed off their potential on the defensive side of the court. However, the Raps do sit just 21st in defensive rating since the trade, and that's something Darko needs to spend an equal amount of time on implementing in comparison to his offensive scheming. It bodes well that the Raps man in charge just had a meeting with 13-time NBA champion and arguably the greatest coach ever in Phil Jackson. Quickly, no pun intended, regarding the dubs, fellow Torontonian Andrew Wiggins continues to struggle, bricking shots in embarrassing fashion. The dubs are a minus 150 with Wiggs on the court and plus 157 with Wiggs off the court. It's been time for Kerr to move him to the end of the bench for a while, as tough as that is to say as a fellow Torontonian. Meanwhile, for Quickly, who's averaging 17 and 6 during his time with the Raptors so far, as a playmaker, there's been moments where he's flashed shades of being a legitimate Tyrese Maxey Stephen Curry esque hybrid. Rooted deep in his bag next to the fries at the bottom, Emmanuel's polished ability to stop on a dime, change gears, shoot off the dribble from anywhere on the court, and also attack off the bounce to the hoop could lead him as high up in Toronto's hierarchy in terms of scoring options as he wants to. He only had 9 points in the blowout W to Golden State, but Emmanuel's 10 dimes were game-altering. Key for this man is continuing to stay committed to the grind in terms of stretching out adequately pregame, working with this proven to be all business Raptor coaching staff, and putting in reps on his fundamentals and mental approach that'll all be essential for his consistency. That said, Quick's dope to watch go to work when he's locked in on both ends and enjoying the game. Coach Darko's caught that drift as well, as quickly spoke on Ryakovich's mentorship of him post-game in Memphis, saying, Darko pulled me aside while the game was going on and said, you not having fun, have fun. He told me that, then I started skipping. In terms of in the Bay Area, after the dubs had cut it to 9, the Raps would go on a mini run to end the third quarter, extending their start-to-finish lead to a comfortable 14 entering the final stages. In the fourth quarter, it was one of three Canadians on the court next to Kojo and RJ and Chris Boucher, who cemented the victory for the six by draining several deep-range bombs early in the period. While German World Cup MVP Dennis Schroeder struggled in the starting five this season, DS going back to the bench role he played in Los Angeles has made him a winning contributor that you can't forget about. Since the trade for Quickly off the pine, Schroeder owns Toronto's highest plus-minus at plus 43 over that span. Speaking of number 43, in terms of spicy P, Pascal Siakam, Raptor fans have held themselves back as a collective from feeling too over-the-top excited about their production since trading OG, because the Raptors' second scoring option in 2019's championship is also in heavy trade rumors approaching the 2024 deadline. Whether or not the Raptors should trade Pascal, who's shooting 60-plus percent from both the field and from deep since the trade, is something I'm interested in hearing from Toronto fans themselves about. Based off Siakam, Siakam being an expiring contract and having a well-documented, not-so-great relationship with Masai Ujiri, it's arguable that's the way to move forward. It would likely mean losing a lot more games this season in what's not the most hyped up by any means 2024 draft class. That said, Masai knows best. Despite being an unbiased NBA fan in general, as a basketball fan in Toronto, I can't help but state that it's pretty dope that the Raptors are a watchable team again. After taking the L to a league-best Celtics team, Masai Ujiri clearly had enough and opted to make what turned out to be an outstanding business decision given what he netted in exchange for an expiring deal in OG Ananobi. Shockingly forcing the dubs to pull the plug with over 6 minutes left after taking a 26 point advantage, it was good to see the grizzled 17 year NBA veteran who broke Joel Embiid's ankles in 2022's playoffs being Thaddeus Young check in and knock down his first 3 point shot of the year. For today's shout out question, should the Raptors trade Siakam or stand pat? Best answer gets next video shout out. Top 5 Commodores with the most shout outs by June 21st earn free NBA merch of their choosing. Today's shout out goes to Liam, who gives his score prediction for the Raps Warriors. That turned out to be false, but given he was the only man to leave a prediction, had to give the man a shout out. Leave your take on today's question to Compete Community Speaks, though. Let me know those thoughts on Spicy P. D Flow signing off.